God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I am Jamar Grimsley, and this is Get Right With God, y'all, where we all are a work in progress. You guys, we all trying to get our lives right with God. Hallelujah. Uh, y'all, um, I know you guys can see the title, um, and it says, um, Seeking First God's Kingdom. Seeking First God, God's Kingdom. Uh, doing what, what, what God's will is first before anything else. Um, but you guys, before we get into the word, I want you guys to please support my channel. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Make sure that you share this video. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you uh, turn on the notifications bell. And please make sure that you comment down below because I want to know what you guys think. All right. I want you guys to chime in. I want you guys to, um, you know, active, be active here and let's talk about it. <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, um, the title, um, Seeking First God's Kingdom, Seeking First God's Kingdom. And um, I'm going to come from the book of Matthew. I know this is a very familiar passage of scripture. I want to um, start, first of all, from verse 25. Um, and this is Jesus and he's talking to people that are worried and, you know, people that are uh, worried about what am I going to eat and what, you know, like as if God is not providing, like they're really worried and, and upset. And he's saying, as long as you do this, don't worry about any of that. You know, the way you're acting is the way that an unbeliever um, acts, but you are a child of God and you're doing his work. So do not worry about those things. You are a believer in Christ and you belong to God. And as his servant, doing his will first before anything that you want to do, God is going to take care of you because I need you to do my will. Oh, glory to your name, God. So Matthew 6, I'm going to start at verse 25. It says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, right? What ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on, right? Is not life more than meat and the body than raiment, right? So so is it all just food? Like, is that what you worried about? Just food? Life is more than just food, right? Verse 26, it says, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are you not much more better than they? Like, are you not much more important than a bird? You understand what I'm saying? So why would God not take care of you? You are made in his image, right? Um, verse 27 said, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Meaning, um, if you worry about tomorrow or you worry about if you don't have food, if you worried about uh, what you're going to wear, and are, is that going to add, you know, years to your life like why worry worry is not going to do anything it's not going to do anything it's just going to give you a headache it's going to stress you out and it's going going to raise your blood pressure all right verse 38 i mean 28 says and why take ye thought for raiment consider the lilies in the field how they grow they toil not neither do they spin and yet i say unto you that even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these Therefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall ye much more not, well, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Right? If you're worried, you don't, you don't, your faith needs to be upped. Like your faith is not where it needs to be. Right? It says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or whither with or with without shall we be clothed like you worried about you know those things that does not really matter i got you on these things right for it says for after all these things do the gentiles seek those are the worries that people that do not believe in god they're they that's their worries but it says for your heavenly father oh yes the creator of the universe which is your heavenly father right it says that he knoweth what thee have need and that you have need of all these things so before you even ask he already knows he knows that you need air to breathe he knows that you need clothes to wear like he knows you need food like he already knows those things so you don't have to oh what am i gonna eat today and um i don't have any clothes and you know um you know what i'm gonna do tomorrow because i have no food and you know i don't know and he's saying i got you just chill just relax just chill and i got you as long as you continue, verse 33 of, 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 of Matthew chapter 6, 
I got you. I got I got everything you everything you want. You know, I got it. Everything you need. I'm a, I'm a supply to you according to my riches and glory. As long as you it says, but seek ye first, right? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So what are these things? These things that you're worried about, you know, these things that you feel God has uh, forgotten about, or these things that you uh, believe that God has, um, is not going to take care of, uh, that ministry will take off. Or well, yes, that business will take off. That healing, that thing that you have been sick, that affliction, that healing, you it will come to pass for you. That uh, that uh, that uh, that uh, that that deliverance that you've been praying for, that thing that you've been bound and and struggling with and going through, that you don't see your way out, he'll deliver you. Um, those children, uh, all of those things that you have desired, he's saying here. In 633, as long as you seek first my kingdom and, and live righteously, he said that all of these things shall be added unto you. So, 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 so what he's saying here is do my work. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the way that things operate in this earth. So he says, seek first that, like do what it is that my, my will in this earth, do what I've called you to do. Just do that, do and do it first, do that first. Don't do what you want to do first, but do what I'm asking you to do. Do what the will that I've given you to do. Do that, right? You do that, and you just do that, and that alone. He said, take therefore no thought for the for tomorrow, right? This is verse 34. It says, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Y'all, which means that there's enough, you know, stuff to worry about in today, which you shouldn't be worried about because he got you. But what I'm saying is you worried about today. You worried about tomorrow. You worried about next week. Like, do you know that you'll even be alive next week? Like, do you know what tomorrow holds? Don't worry about that. You worry about today and know that I'm taking care of you today, just like I did yesterday, last week, last month, last year. Like, I've been taking care of you. You know, you're still alive, right? So why would you worry about tomorrow? Didn't I take care of you yesterday? Didn't I take care of you last week? Why are you worried about those things, right? Um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? So, so do what he wants you to do. Do your calling. Work on what God has called you to, but do that first. Do that first. Do that first above what you want to do. And that's like Jesus' life was an example. He said, I must be about my father's business, right? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness, so live righteously. You know, do God's work and live righteously. Don't do God's work and play around and dibble in sin and dabble in sin, but do God's work. Do what he would have you to do. Do all that you know how to do on this earth to do what God has called you to. You know, if you come across people that are sad and depressed, go and minister to them. Talk to them. You know, just give them hope. Encourage them through Jesus. You know, if you... Uh, can share a testimony with somebody just that's been struggling or battling or going with some stuff that you've been through. Share your testimony. Okay, yeah, I'll battle with this. I went through that. God set me free. Just hold on. It may not happen when you want it to, but trust God and just wait on him because he's an on-time God. I don't care what it looks like. I was in your same situation and God brought me through. So, so those things are seeking first the kingdom of God, not doing what you want to do. You understand what I'm saying? If you, um, if you got to go somewhere, let's say you want to go to the mall, right? Uh, but you, if you go to church first, you're going to miss the mall. So if you say, okay, I'm going to go to the mall and maybe I'll go to church next week. That's not seeking first in God's kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? So above anything that you want to do, you put God's work first and then he'll add everything to you that he said that that you even need and he'll give you your wants. Like you won't have to worry about anything. It's something about being in the will of God, you guys. And when you're in the will of God, it's just something he just takes care of. You don't have to worry about anything like he takes care of it supernaturally. He'll do it. You know, somehow you don't have a job. You don't have money, but you're doing the work of God. But your bills are paid. You understand your phone is still on. Your rent is paid. Like you can't even explain it but it's supernatural because you're doing the work of God and he says I'll supply all your all your needs accord all my your needs according to my riches and glory right and he says seek first the kingdom of God and, and all the righteousness and then all of these things I will add unto you like all of these things these things that 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 you may think you need but 
Because you're doing my will, I have to take care of you because I need you. I, I have need of you on this earth, right? And then it says, for it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So a lot of times, you guys, we have our own will. We got our own desires, but God puts the will in you, which means like we already know what we should be doing. Like we know what we should be doing. Um, but there's still a rebellious nature there, but it is God who gives you the will to do his good pleasure, which is to do his will in this earth. But some people are fighting against it. You know, if I've called you, um, to preach, you know, you, you know, the callings there, but you do not want to surrender. Like you still want to play around and you still want to do your stuff because you know, once you, um, accept this and give me your yes, like you're here, you've accepted this thing and now you're, you're working for me. So it's, it's, it's me giving you that desire to do what I want you to do, what, what pleases me. But, you know, again, God is not going to make you do anything, you know, but he gives you a choice and he gives you the willing heart. He gives you the uh, desire. He gives you the, the it's, it's going to please him, you know, the will to do his good pleasure, you know, but he's giving you that desire, that thing that you enjoy doing. Do you enjoy just preaching the word of God? If you enjoy preaching the word of God be a preacher. You are a preacher. Preach. Don't keep your mouth closed. You, God has given you that will to do of his good pleasure. If you are a gospel singer, sing. Sing to the glory of the Lord. You know, if you encourage people, do that. Use that. Like, I'm giving you this will. Like, I'm giving this to you, you know, to do what pleases me, what to do good with good, my pleasure, you know. So, I'm giving you this, this will, this desire. But again, he ain't gonna make us do it, you guys. You know, he ain't going to make us do it, but he's going to give us the, the desire. You know what I'm saying? But we still have our own choice. Some people are not yet surrendered to God. Like, they still want to play around and do what they want to do. And you know God has called you to a certain thing. And um, you still want to play around. And you just, you know, you're not ready. I'm hearing workplace uh, ministry. Like, uh, workplace, 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 workplace. Like, I don't know, but somebody, um, God is called to... Uh, workplace ministry like you got to minister to the people at your job um they need uh that light in a dark place which god has placed you there to do that so i don't know who that's for but what do you call it it's, it's that workplace ministry that's what you've been called marketplace ministry that's what you've been called to marketplace ministry so you go to work you're supposed to talk about the goodness of the lord and and you know encourage people through that like that is your calling is to work um you know, to do the marketplace ministry, you know, so that's your job. And I don't know who it's for, but as I'm speaking it, you know who um, God is speaking to. God, the God is speaking to you there. But yeah, again, um, you guys, we got our own desires. We got our own wills. We got our own um, things that we want to do, you know, so everybody's not quite yet surrendered to God. But you have to see if, if you don't have the things that you need and the things. So, so you got to give you some wants, but you got to do what he wants. And then he'll give you what are those desires of your heart? Delight yourself in me. I'll give you those desires of your heart. Like, what are those things that you want? Do you want a nice car? You know, do you do you want a nice house? Like, what do you want? Like, I'll give you those things. You just do my will and, you know, um, just continue to stay uh, faithful to me and you. You just continue to, uh, you know, not go to the left or the right, but continue to do my will. And, and, and this is the key right here. Live righteously. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Live righteously. And then all of these things will be added unto you. Every those things that you need, he's already provided those, but he'll give you some wants. Oh, yes, he'll give you some wants. <laughs> he'll give you some wants. Oh, glory to your name. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we have to um, do the will of God, you know, let God's will be done um, in this earth. You know, again, we're just vessels. You know, God uses people to get his will accomplished. Like God is not going to come down here and encourage somebody that needs to hear an encouraging word. No, he's going to call somebody um, to go to the person and he's going to allow that person uh, to go and encourage this person because God uses people, you guys. He ain't going to come down here and do these things, but he's going to use us. He uses vessels. We're his vessels, you know, and he uses us to get his will accomplished, you know, in this earth, you know, but once you are totally 
surrender to God. Like you don't care about your own will. Like whatever God wants, that's what I'm going to do. Like you're so full of the Holy Spirit that you just let, like, remember when, um, after Jesus did his 40 day fast, right? It says that he was filled with the Holy Spirit, which means he's full of the Holy Spirit, you know? But not just full of the Holy Spirit, but he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. So he's full of the Spirit of God. He's all about his father's business. And then he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. So, so Jesus is truly just being led by the Spirit of God. Like you don't even notice it because you just surrender to God. And, and you just use the Spirit of God. Is, is, is kind of like, I ain't going to say you're like a robot, but it's kind of like being that you are filled with the Spirit of God. You are just letting the Spirit lead you to do the things that God wants you to do. But it's because you are filled with the Spirit of God and you're not playing around with sinning. You're just really about your Father's business, just like Jesus was filled with the Spirit of God and led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. It's the same thing. You're filled with the Spirit of God and you're totally surrendered, which means you're just letting the Spirit lead you to do those things that God wills that would bring um, his pleasure. He gives those things to, to bring his pleasure. What is it? I keep getting it a little fumbled up. For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So when you're totally surrendered and submitted to God and he's your, just, just, that's your whole mission is to just serve and, and please the Lord in everything you do. That type of person is one that surrendered to God, is submitted to God. It's, it's God's will over anything that they want to do, no matter how uncomfortable, no matter how sleepy they may be, no matter how far they have to travel, no matter what it looks like, like you're going to get that thing accomplished that God has called you to do. Like that's all you, you everything you're doing is working on that. I'm going to I'm gonna travel to Germany. Like God said, travel to Germany. It's people over there that need ministers to, then I'm going to travel to Germany. You understand what I'm saying? And that's your mission, like, but but God is going to provide everything that you need because you are seeking first his kingdom, you know? So he'll He'll make sure the funds is in place. He'll make sure the place that, that you're going to stay in is already mapped out. It's already there. Like, it, everything is already there. All he needs is a willing vessel. And once you will yourself to him, like, give everything to him, Everything that he needs you to do, everything is already there. It's already in place. It just needs, let the spirit lead you to do this. Let him lead you to do that. And you know, it's not like it's not going to be some bumps in the road, but you, you still, um, God is still on your side and he'll help you to push through those things. He always makes a way when he gives you an assignment. He's not going to just give you the assignment here. No, he's going to help you to get the assignment accomplished. You know what I'm saying? So again, if he calls you to Germany, he's going to make every provision in order for that to happen because he has somebody else in mind. Somebody in Germany needs to hear the word of God. Oh, glory to your name. God, I thank you, Jesus. So you guys, we have to be surrendered and submitted to the will of God to do everything that 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 we know uh, uh, that God would be pleased with. Walk in that calling. Do that thing that he's called you to, you know. Everybody's not a preacher. Everybody, you know, but do the will of God. You understand what I'm saying? Do the will of God. Do the thing that God has called you to do, you know, and go above and beyond that. Like, don't just stay there. Like, if you're a pastor, of, of course, um, you're going to preach on Sundays and that's your calling and stuff. But if you see other things to do in the kingdom of God, do those things, you know. Um, if somebody needs money and you have it, then you can help somebody. That's seeking first the kingdom of God. You don't just have to wait until Sunday to just preach or whatever your thing is, whatever it is, but don't just stay there. But as long as you're doing the will of God, do it, do it. You know, some people are are, are kingdom financiers. You know, they're the ones that provide uh, money. Like God just blesses them. They have the gift just to, you know, be able to receive money. Somehow they have money and they're, they're, they're supposed to give the money out to the churches or give the money out to different places to get the will of God accomplished because, you know, ministry is not cheap. You know, ministry, um, it takes money, you know, so God has to raise up kingdom financiers, those people that are going to give to the work of the ministry so that God's will could be done. So, like, it doesn't really matter, but just seek first the kingdom. Do all you can to better the world, to encourage people, uh, to grow people in God, 
to do the assignment that he's like, just do all that's your focus. Like to please God, what does God want me to do? Like it's a hunger and God to continue to give you assignments, continue to give you assignments, continue to like you're surrendered and submitted totally to God. I'm all about his work, just like Jesus. And that's what God wants us to do. You guys, he wants us to give up our own will, you know, of course, we got our own will because we want to go to certain schools and we want to be in certain relationships and we want to uh, um, eat certain things. You know, sometimes God will call you away from um, certain things. I remember even with me, with eating meat, like at one point, hamburger meat, hamburger meat, that's all I used to eat. And um, I said, man, I never give up hamburger meat. I love hamburgers so much. Like, I always eat hamburgers to the day I die because I love me a good Big Mac. I love me a good Whopper. You know, I love me a good burger on the grill. You know, so, um, but every time I would eat, let me let me share this with you because it's a funny story, but God got a way of getting your attention, right? Um, so every time I would eat a hamburger, um, one time I ate a hamburger and my foot swole up, like, really bad, and, but I didn't know what it was. You know, because it just happened all of a sudden. I'm like, I woke up and then my foot was swollen. I'm like, whoa, where did, where did this come from? Did I, did I hit my foot on something? Like, why is my foot hurting and I can't even walk? And I'm like, whoa, what is, what's going on? So, so I'm trying to walk and it, I just couldn't walk. So I called the ambulance and the ambulance came and you know they took me to the hospital and stuff and they said what I had was something called gout, right? And I said, okay, I never heard of that. They say it's like an arthritis which flares up when you do certain things, like um. I used to drink back then, so I was drinking alcohol, and, and they said from red meat and, like, rich foods, like lobster and stuff like that. So I am said, wow, well, I didn't drink yesterday. I didn't drink anything. I don't really eat seafood like that, and but I do eat red meat, and red meat was one of the things that causes the flare-up. It causes your foot to swell up like that. So I said, okay, you know, that's not it. You know, I don't think that. So, so I ate another hamburger another time. Maybe like a week later, the same thing happened, right? And I ended up going to the hospital again. They gave me some medicine and told you, okay, you got gout. So you have to stop eating red meat or you got to stop drinking or you got to... It's different things on the list. So, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And I ate it again and the same thing happened. So it's kind of like the very thing that I promised that I would never stop doing. I love me a hamburger. Like God would take that away from me. Because, let me tell you, when I eat I eat a hamburger, it makes me super lazy. Like, I could say, okay, I'm going to pray. But when I eat a hamburger, it's like I get tired and sleepy, and then I get sluggish, and I end up not praying. So God saw that pattern. You understand what I'm saying? But it was with hamburgers because I always ate hamburgers, and I never would pray because I was eating hamburgers, you know? So God saw the damage that that was doing. So you say, okay, you ain't going to give this up? <laughs> Let me, let me, let me, let me show you. I'm going to show you that you're going to give this up, you know? So every time I would eat a hamburger, he would allow my foot to swell up, you know? So it's kind of like never say what you're not going to do because you know, God is in control of it. And um, again, it's part of being surrendered to him. If God wants me to pray and I don't pray because of hamburger meat, he's going to take the very thing that I said, I never give up. He'll take that away. You understand what I'm saying? So Never say what you ain't going to do, but you know, it was just a part of God's plan to help me to be surrendered and submitted to his will. So now I eat turkey burgers, <laughs> you know, I eat turkey burgers and I notice a difference. First of all, I'm probably losing a little bit of weight and then, but not that, but I'm just also, it, it doesn't make me sleepy and sluggish and tired. And, but you know, I thank God because it's also a little healthier lifestyle. So those things that we, uh, we think God is punishing us or well why god don't want me to have a good hamburger like i love me a good cheeseburger so why would he take this away from me but he really trying to help us you know you never know i could have had a heart attack high cholesterol none of that so it's like he helped me but i was looking at it like god why do god want me to not eat hamburgers but he was helping me and he was helping the kingdom because i can pray now you know and now i'm living a healthier lifestyle without hamburger meat you understand what i'm saying so it's kind of like God is always up to something. Like he don't always just, he don't just do things for no reason, but he's always up to something. You understand what I'm saying? But, but yeah, we're supposed to just be surrendered and submitted to God and give up, like I say, hamburgers, which is those things that we want to do, you know, that we want, you know, give it up for God and do God's will, do God's work, do let God's plan be accomplished on this earth through you, you know? So we have to, um, again, y'all seek first God's kingdom, you know? and live righteously, then and only then will he begin to add all of those other things to you. So sometimes if you don't have those things, like if you are not, uh, if you're looking for a wife or 
looking for a husband or, you know, your business is not picking up or, you know, uh, your ministry is not picking up or you, 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 you still with a sickness or, or something like that. You have to, am I seeking the kingdom of God? Am I doing all that I know how to do to please the Lord? Like, am I? So you have to examine yourself then. And then God will begin to, you know, flash some things before your mind. Well, no, I've called you to preach on the radio. You know, I've called you to start a prayer line, but you're not doing it. So until you do it, I am not going to prosper you. Like you're going to stay where you are, you know. Um, so so it's those things and, and it's certain things that God's called us to and we know, but it's just kind of uncomfortable for us or it's something new or we just don't want to do it. But, you know, God is going to give you the strength to do that thing, you know, but you have to step out in faith and just do it anyway. You know, so God calls us to certain assignments, but we don't do them a lot of times. But those things causes us to even be bound by certain uh, things like you may need deliverance, but it won't be until you begin that assignment that God has called you to before he'll allow you to be free. You understand before that sickness, before he'll allow you to be healed, you know, before that spouse will come like you have to do this job right here. If you don't do this job right here, then I will not prosper you like you're going to stay here. In this place until you do my will you know what i'm saying so you, you still have a choice but if you don't do what god has called you to then you're gonna kind of just stay you know in in a place of you know whatever it is that you need um that 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 little uh stronghold or that thing whatever that is you'll stay there so you have to examine yourself and again like as i'm speaking god is even revealing stuff to some people that's watching like okay yeah god did call me to uh, do this prayer line or, you know, God did call me to, uh, the, 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 uh, the media, the ministry of media, you know, or God called me to, uh, a prison ministry or, you know, God called me to preach, you know, on Facebook, you know, some people's calling is Facebook preaching. Like that's some people's calling, because let me tell you, there is an audience for people that are on social media. There's people that, um, like this, See, I have a YouTube channel, and right now this is for my YouTube channel, but when God gives me this assignment, I walked into it, but I was very, very nervous because I've never done anything like that. I mean, I preached on Facebook and stuff, but but when this is something new, you know, but God gives me the the strength to do it, you know. It is his will. He gives the desire um, to get to do what, what pleases him. He's giving me that. Why can't I? That scripture, boy, just keep, I got to remember that one. For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, you know, it's, it's not my desire, but it's God that gives me that desire to do that thing that's going to please him. So, you know, um, but again, there's a, a ministry, there's people watching this on YouTube that may not, that just needs to be encouraged, needs to hear the word, needs to be informed about God. Need, like there's, that's what I'm saying, like media ministry, there's people that are called to that because there's an audience of people that um, are on social media. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but not saying that's your only calling, but there's a calling. There's always something that God will give a person. Like I was saying about uh, jail ministry or, you know, every, there's always a mention. There's always something that God has, um, you know, called us to do. So we just have to do it, you guys. Just do it. You know, get it out the way. And once you start it, you'll be like, wow, this thing was so easy. I couldn't believe I should have been did this, you know. So it's kind of like it just takes a step of faith to walk into it, you know. But but you guys, just just seek the kingdom of God first and and um, just live righteously. And then he'll give you everything that you need. And he'll give you some wants also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word, Lord. I I don't know who it was for, Lord, but but you gave it to me, God, and you know who it was for. So I thank you, and I pray that uh, the one that it was for, God, that they not only heard it but received it, God, and help them to apply it into their lives, God. <laughs> Father, help them to do your will above anything that they want to do, God. Ah, glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, and reveal to them that the reason they may not be getting the promise, the reason they may not be advancing in a certain area is because of this thing that you called them to, God, that they have not begun to walk in it, God. Begin to bring it to their remembrance right now, God. 
Begin to bring it to their remembrance, God, the thing that you called them to walk in, God, that they have not yet done. Bring it to them now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Father, help them. Give them strength to do it, Father. Strengthen their faith, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Remove people from their lives that will hinder them from the assignment, God, that will hinder them from things that you called them to do, God. Help them to seek first your kingdom, God, and live righteously, God. And let them know that only then, and only then, ah, will these things, God, ah, those things that they need, those things that they want will be added unto them and they will not have a worry, God. Father, so we just thank you for this word on today, God. Oh, we just love you and honor you and appreciate you, God. I give you praise and glory. Ah, I give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You guys, I truly do believe that um, that word was was for somebody. Like, it was for somebody. And um, I believe I was saying something about, like, God was showing somebody something. Like, this is what God has called you to. I don't know what it is, but as I was it's like the Holy Spirit was reminding you of what that thing is. So whatever that thing that the Holy Spirit just reminded you of is the thing that God has called you to do. And until you do it, you won't prosper like you uh, should actually be prospering because just like you're hindering or holding back your own blessing by your disobedience. So once you do that thing that the Holy Spirit just revealed to you, I don't know, but it revealed something to you. That that thing that you're, you you have not done or you're not doing uh, fully to the the, the, the the extent of what you're supposed to be doing it, then you got to do that thing. God is going to help you to do it. So you don't have to worry about fear and all of that stuff. Um, again, for it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Oh, glory to your name. Well, anyway, you guys, I pray that you guys receive something from that word on today. Um, I am Jamar Grimsley, and this is Get Right With God. Um, if you guys um, wouldn't mind supporting my channel, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you uh, like the video. Make sure that you share the video. Make sure you comment down below because I want to know who that was for, and I want you guys to uh, just just uh, let me know what you thought about the message. Was it for you or do you think it was for somebody else? So what do you think about seeking first the kingdom of God? And like, what is your opinion on it? You know, and uh, make sure that you turn on the notifications bell so that when I upload a video that you guys would be notified. All right. Again, I'm Jamar Grimsley and this is Get Right With God. I thank you guys for watching and I love you guys. And until next time, may the angels of the Lord encamp around you guys, keeping you safe from any and all harm, hurt and danger of any kind. God bless you. You guys take care. Bye bye.